This system, um, it's, it's a really unique system. Um, I picked it up from uh, Wellscroft Fence Systems, Dave Kennard up there. This is a insulator nailed to a pressure treated board held on by a couple of nails with fender washers. And what happens in this system, and it's really innovative, is that the nail goes through the board, the fender washer holds the nail. So you have to make sure that that fender washer is not larger than your nail. Anyway, that goes through. I used a galvanized nail so it doesn't, doesn't um, rot. You could use coated nails. There's different ways of doing it. There's plastic coated nails. Those could work well. Um, in any event, this goes on. I have two nails in there. And as the tree grows, it's going to push on this board. So this tree is pushing on this board. And as that tree pushes on the board, it pulls that nail out. And wh what that does is it prevents your tree from growing into your wire. And whenever you have an insulator, even if it's the insulator nailed right to the tree, the tree's gonna grow around that insulator because there's not enough surface there for it to push the insulator out. And eventually the tree's gonna grow around it fast enough that the tree bark is then gonna touch your line and you need to put a new insulator in and it's just gonna be a sloppy system. So this is a much better way of doing it because this board slides out as the tree grows. And I might even be able to pop it a little bit. See, I can pop that board right out. Um, so as that tree grows, those nails push. They don't need to be super deep into the tree. All I'm doing with this is trying to keep this fence from moving this way, which there's not a lot of pressure on that, or from moving up and down. Um, and these can last for a long time. So that's a really nice way of doing it. The other thing I'll show you here is another insulator option. So one thing you could do, and I'll just use this nail as if it were fence, you could have this type of insulator, which is a tubular insulator. These are really inexpensive. These are uh, maybe twice the cost of these. These are probably somewhere around like 40 cents a piece, maybe a buck a piece at most. Pro I don't think they're that much, maybe 40 cents. Um, and then these are probably like 25 cents, 20 cents a piece. These would go in, you slide them all down your line at the start. And then you staple them in. And you don't crush them completely because you want them to still be insulating, but you staple them until the top portion gets compressed, the top fin gets compressed. So it doesn't have to go very far because you want the fence to still be able to slide in these tubular insulators. So making sure you're not doing a pinch point. And if you hit them too far, you're gonna, you're gonna break the insulator and then it's gonna short electricity between the wire and the staple. So these work, um, I've used them. They're nice, they're inexpensive. I like these a lot better because in this system, I can't choose to drop my fence. If I wanna drop my fence, it's really easy with the pins. But um, with this, I'd have to pull the staples and deal with it. The other reason I don't like using these anymore is I gotta count how many posts I'm gonna have as I go down the line. And counting how many posts, well, geez, I have. I have to have 10 insulators and then I go and do it. And I'm like, oh, I need 11 and I missed one in the middle. It's just, it's a pain in the butt. Whereas this, I don't have to do any counting at the beginning. And when it's hot and it's the springtime and you're trying to put up fence before your animals need to graze, counting is not your favorite thing to do. Um, so that's, that's one way of attaching a fence to a living tree while doing minimal damage to the tree. It's, it's got one hole from a nail there and one hole from a nail there. Both of those holes together are smaller than one maple syrup tap. Um, and those nails won't stay in the tree because they'll get pushed out as this pressure treated board gets pushed out. And if you don't like pressure treated, you could use a black locust board. You could also use, um, I've used white cedar. Um, you could use red cedar boards. Anything that's rot resistant will work. Um, so you can, you can choose what works for your farm. So that's one way. And what we're gonna do next is look at another way of attaching fence to a living tree without doing damage to that living tree. All right, what we're gonna look at here is another way of attaching a perimeter fence to a living tree without doing, in this case, without doing any damage to the living tree. Uh, this is a, a neat product that um, came out from Expand Farm Products. Uh, and I'm not, not doing a lot of company pitches, but you know, this is, a, this is a innovative thing developed by farmers and I was glad to, glad to give it a try and I still use it in some cases. Um, there, for, for a tree like this young sugar maple that I don't want to necessarily put a hole in, 
Um, maybe it's a tree I want to grow into a saw log someday, so putting a nail in it is a no-no if you want to ever saw that tree into lumber. Um, or in this case, maybe I want to grow it to make maple syrup. Whatever the reason, I don't want to do any damage to this tree. Um, these work pretty well. And so the way this works is I have a rubber rope. So this is like a rubber tie-down rope, like you might see a, uh, used in, in commercial trucking. And this rubber rope, it's stretchy, okay? So it, it stretches. And the expand insulator has clips on it where the rope comes around and then clips underneath. And that just creates a friction point that holds it. And so what I can do is I can cut my rubber rope to the proper length based on the tree. I can pull my insulator moderately tight. It doesn't have to be super tight. And now I have an insulator with a rubber rope around a tree. Um, and I can put my fence in there. And that's gonna hold my fence up. Where these, they, they do well if, it, I mean, if, if I, a tree branch falls on this and it, right, it can sort of hold it or they break off, but then I just go back and I fix them, right? So you get a big windstorm or something, knocks your fence down. Where they don't work well is if you have consistent down pressure. So it's fine if a branch falls on it and drags it down and you go fix it after the windstorm. But where they don't work well is if this is like the peak of a hill and then the fence is gonna go down on each side um, because then you'll have constant down pressure and they'll flip over like this. They also don't work if they're down in, the, in a gully and the fence is being pulling them up. So these work well for a straight shot. They're great for a tree um, that you don't wanna put any holes in, don't wanna do any damage to, but you really wanna be on a straight level shot if you're using these, um, these expand insulators. So, but I do like them. What I always do is I keep a few of them in my fencing bucket. So when I'm out there, if I'm running fence along the edge of a field and there's a tree or two I wanna use some, I'll put them in. So I think they're a great tool to have in your toolkit. And uh, what, we'll look, what we'll look at next is how you can actually end the, uh, the perimeter fence in, uh, either in a corner or in a, uh, on a tree. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. So we're here, we're taking a look at um, what not to do. So this is sort of the old way of putting up, especially cattle fence, uh, barbed wire. What would happen is it would be stapled directly to the tree, um, living tree, tree grows around the wire. Eventually um, things happen, the trees move, right? Trees are always moving. And so we want, we want our fence to be flexible and move. And in this case, when it's stapled right to it, it can't, it can't flex and move. So barbed wire is all about sharp barbs, animals hit it, um, but it's really difficult because it's not flexible. And when you, whether this is barbed wire or electric fence, if you staple it right to the tree, the tree's gonna grow around it. And then what happens when a branch falls on it and pulls tension or an animal runs into it, you end up breaking your posts. And so we can see here, an old post that was attached to this barbed wire. And at some point, something bent this wire down and snapped the post. And we end up with what is a nightmare for me as a farmer, a modern farmer trying to deal with all this old barbed wire. Um, so this is a good example of what not to do and why electric fencing is a much preferred method for, for managing, especially cattle, than uh, barbed wire. Here we're gonna take a look at how you might end a uh, perimeter fence on a, using a tree, um, or in this case, I made a corner here. Um, and there's other ways to do that, but this is just one way of doing it. What I'm trying to show is the J-bolt. So this is a bolt that screws into, um, in this case, I'm screwing it into a tree. It's shaped like a J. The top comes up, it's got an insulator that comes on, and you, it's got a uh, lock washer that goes on the top. So this way the fence is still hot, it comes across and keeps going. Um, in this case, I use two different sections of wire here, just figuring if I ever wanna take one down, I can, I can actually unhook that. Um, but you could also just have a continuous wire going around this and going. Uh, it, it works well, you know, this is a trade-off. I wouldn't necessarily wanna put holes in this nice uh, sugar maple. Again, it's not gonna kill the tree, but it's not good for the tree. Um, but this tree was in a perfect spot for the end of this line and to send, the, send this uh, fence along the other edge of the field. And when I think about the time it would take me to build a double H brace here, so a corner H brace into the stone wall, um, 
in the cost of that, it's, it's so much more than what this tree is worth. Um, and for me, I'm not looking at this tree as saw timber. I would look at it potential as maple syrup production in the future. So yes, I don't want to do it, but yes, I also want to do it because it saves me a lot of time and effort. Um, and so these are trade-offs we make. I think the key is just being cognizant of what you're doing. Um, one of the things I did with these J bolts intentionally as I left them long, knowing that I have a lot of growth of this tree that can grow over this before it ever engulfs this bolt. The other thing is if it starts getting closer to it, what I can do is I can, I can unscrew it um, out as the tree gets bigger. And uh, it works. Uh, one thing I, I also do here is I'll, I can connect or disconnect these wires just by, just by wrapping them. And that allows me to pass along that electricity through the system. Um, so it, it works well, it's not ideal. Another thing with a corner like this I could have done is I could have put some really thick insulator, like a couple of pieces of hose um, and wrapped it around the tree. So that way the tree actually wouldn't have a hole in it at all. I could just wrap the wire around the tree. But the wire needs to be in some sort of hard, hard plastic coating. So maybe one electric wire sleeve and then a piece of like one inch maple tubing. And then that can wrap around the tree and it wouldn't cause any damage to the tree at all. The tree would grow. Um, and just press the wire out. So I didn't do that in this case, um, but there are different ways to do it.